Hello everyone, this is Chuck and you're watching Let's Plant Bites. In this installment, we're going to have a look at the questions that people raised after watching my latest episode of Let's Plant, which talks about six reasons why you should separate flower stalks from your echeveria. So the first question is from Kelvin and Kelvin asks, Hey Chuck, when you use the Gibby flower stalks for propagation, you chop it off at the base, then chop off the flowers and plant the stalk. Do you remove all the leaves from the stalk as well or do you just leave them and the pups will grow from the leaf apical meristem regardless? This is a very good question from Kelvin and this is in reference to one of my older episodes on the three things you could do or the three methods you could do to propagate from flower stalks. If you haven't seen it, the link would be somewhere here or down in the description. But anyway, to summarize that video, basically I talk about three ways that you could propagate off of flower stalks. The first one is to just chop off the flowers from the stalk, leaving the stalk on the plant itself. The second way is to chop off the flower stalk and replant it as is, flowers and all. And the third method is a mix of the first and the second method wherein you chop off the flower stalk, replant it, then chop off the flowers from that replanted flower stalk. Again, if that doesn't make sense, please have a look at the video. That would, I explain it in a lot more detail there. So to answer Kelvin's question, I basically do not bother removing the flowers anymore so i do chop off the flower stalk which is the second method and i replant them i leave the flowers on because from my experience using my based on my recent experiments it doesn't really matter having the flowers on or off the results are the same and as for the leaves on the stem i keep them on because from again from experience the flower stalk tends to live longer when leaves are there it tends to uh, the rot tends to happen a lot later than usual. And also with Gibby flowers or the frilly types, they do not tend to grow really well from leaf propagation. The results, the, the success rates are really low, so I do not bother with that anymore. I'm getting way better results from having the pups grow on the stems. Leaving all of those leaves in the flower stalks means that the growth rate would be quite high, especially during the growing season, because those leaves could also help with photosynthesis and that means more food for the plant. So despite being detached from the main plant, it is still able to feed itself. But having said that, I do remove a few leaves at the bottom uh, just to expose a few nodes to the open air. And I need a few nodes to get some roots growing. So the goal is that when I eventually plant them in soil, some of the nodes would be underground or covered by soil. And as for the flowers, as I said, I'm leaving them on because at least I do not have to worry about letting it uh, callus over even more because if you chop the top of the stem of course it would be exposed to the open air exposed to the elements then that would be another vector for disease coming in so you know less problems to worry about the rest of the questions are on the YouTube video itself so let's have a look so from Christmas snow one reason I don't plant them over a large area in the garden is because it rains in winter and there is an increased risk of hail damage. This winter had large hail grains which have punctured most of my garden specimens beyond repair. Do you have hail? Which type of protection do you use and which does not block sunlight? So to answer your question, yes, we do get hail, but fortunately for us here in, Western, in the western side of Melbourne, the hailstones are not that big. It's, they are usually just pea size or yeah, around that size and they they melt quite quickly well last winter we had lots of hail barrage and that left a lot of marks on my plants if you were following my daily echeveria posting on instagram or facebook you would see some of the damage but otherwise they are just superficial damage and my plants will recover i could not say the same for some some of the eastern parts of Victoria and other states cause their hailstones, especially if you've seen the news lately, their hailstones are the size of golf balls and they create massive damage. So yeah, we're lucky that the last time we had uh, something that big was several years ago. And since then, I, I've never experienced very large hailstones here in Victoria at least. No, here in Western Melbourne. So yeah, I guess it's luck. As for your other question about protection, I just use, during summer, I use shade cloth. And it's mainly to filter out UV light. 
I use either 30% or 50% rating. The, the great thing about shade cloth is it still allows water or rain to pass through. Granted, maybe at a slightly lower rate because it tends to uh, hold them a bit before you know, it has to be heavy before it starts trickling down. I prefer shade cloth over other types of cover because it's mainly about the UV protection that I'm worried about. And it's strong enough to resist hail. Yeah, that might be an option. So another question from Carmela Chavez, she's asking about the flower stalks. Do you have to remove them when they are already completely dry? I prefer just removing them anyway, even if they are not yet dry. Because the main motivation for me to uh, separate them, as I mentioned in the video, is that they attract insects and not just the beneficial insects. It, this includes the, the pests, the, the mealybugs and stuff. And I wouldn't want them uh, damaging the main plant. So that's my main reason for separating the flower stalks. But if you're lucky enough not to have any of the pests, such as the mealybugs, the aphids, and what have you, then sure, keep them on for as long as possible. And once they're dry, simply pop it off. Uh, it won't do any harm to the plant anyway. Plus, at least you get to enjoy the flower show and the bees and the flies. From Anna Daneker, um, amazing quick recovery of the lawn. What do I ask for in my nursery if I want to buy the same kind of grass? So this is what they call the Kikyu grass. I can't remember the scientific name, but I think the name Kikyu would be familiar for any uh, lawn providers. The problem with Kikyu grass is that they are very invasive. They grow really fast. As you can see, <laughs> they recovered quickly. They spread fast and they tend to put rhizomes. So uh, you have to be during their growing season, especially when it's rainy or you know when they're really green and it's not too hot. You would have to stay on top of them in terms of trimming and stuff because they send lots of rhizomes, you know, runners under the ground and they pop up everywhere. So yeah, it's a bit harder to control them com com compared to other grass such as uh, the buffalo grass. But at least these things grow fast and as long as you are uh, diligent enough with trimming or chopping off the, the runners then you would not have any problems with you know get, having them go where you don't want them to go. In my case, I am able to control them by using top dressing on my garden and uh, they do not stay too long. They do not get to stay alive too long on the rocks because I do not always water the rocks. So they quickly dehydrate and die. A question from Scarlett saying, I'm curious, can you still cross pollinate the flowers after the flower stalk has been removed from the main plant? Yes, pretty much. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I also wanted to separate the flower stalks because at least I have a controlled environment for it. Otherwise, I would have to uh, fight against the bees, you know, because they might pollinate it without my, with my, without my consent. <laughs> From sweet, sweet succulents. Chuck, do you remove some of the leaves off of the stalk first or leave as is? Do you think removing more of the leaves makes pups more likely to sprout? So this is similar to the first question with, from Kelvin. And my answer to this is I only remove the ones at the bottom, you know, just to make enough space for me to plant it in the in, in soil. Because otherwise, if I leave the leaves down, then it would be quite hard for me to maneuver them in a pot. But if there's enough of the stem sticking out, then I would, wouldn't even bother removing the leaves. As for the second question about uh, whether removing the leaves makes the pups more likely to, to sprout, um, my opinion on that is... Uh, I think it's better to leave the leaves on because that way you are not, you are less likely to damage the, the nodes, the meristems on the side of the plant. Because if you remove the leaves and you do not do it properly, you might end up, you know, doing half and half and destroying some of the, some of the nodes. And if, by doing that, you're removing any possibility of uh, pups growing on that specific node. So might as well keep it intact and let it do its thing. And I just want to read this. So Daniqua Cadena says that I'm glad I heard of systemic pesticide from your channel a year ago. It saved my entire collection of plants and I just wanted to let you know that I haven't had a mealybug since. I have over 200 plants so it was a major pain but worth it. Yeah, very good for you. Good for you Daniqua. 
So that's it. I now that I think about it, I used to call this uh, thing a recap. So yeah, ignore my intro. This is a recap, not a bites episode. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd be able to film this weekend because we we have a long weekend coming up, but we also have overtime at work on Saturday. So let's just see how it goes, and I'll see you when I see you. I might do a live stream when I am ready to plant up all of the flower stalks that I chop off from the previous episode and I'll let you know when hopefully it will be sometime next week next weekend not this weekend so yeah I'll see you then bye